We'll start off by creating the required labels for our inputs. So we have current wealth. We have the government bonds and equities. So we'll list it down. So we have government bonds. So this is the risk-free assets. So the return for these government bonds would be 4% based on our parameter. Then we have equities. Then for equities, there's also the return. Or we can say this is the expected annual return. And this is also the expected annual return. Then we have the standard deviation of the returns of the equity. Then we have the proportion invested in equities. Then we have the annual drawdown or the annual withdrawal from the client. And then there's also the donation to the charity. Right, so to distinguish, I'll just align this to the right. Then the current wealth is $2 million. So that's, let's key in that number. Right, then uh, for the return on the risk-free assets on the government bonds, the return is 4%. It's risk-free, so I'm not going to state the standard deviation. But if it's uh, risky, then you can state it down. For equities, the expected return is 12%. A standard deviation is 30%. And the proportion invested in equities is assumed to be 40%. We can change this later. Now, the current uh, withdrawal amount that the client stated is 200000 a year. Let's change this to 200000 Then the amount of donation that she wants to leave to charity at the end of 10 years will be $1 million. Right, now let's uh, color the inputs here in blue so that we'll know that these are inputs. So I now like to call it blue for inputs. Now, uh, before we do the or implement the Monte Carlo simulation, I will first create one round of simulation. So this will be the year. So currently, let's start with year one, two, and then it goes all the way up to year 10. So I'll just pull this down to year 10. And then we have the wealth, her wealth at the beginning of the year. Right, then uh, let's click on wrap tax. Okay, then we have uh, the amount invested in equities. And then the amount invested in government bonds. Then we have, uh, we will also draw random numbers. Okay, and the random numbers are based on the normal distribution. So I'll just put a label here. Then we have, uh, we'll calculate the return of the equities since it's a risky variable. So this is the return on equities with a one plus. And then we'll have the wealth, okay, at end of the year. Then we have drawdown or withdrawal, as you can name it. Right, so the labels are here. So I'll just align this to the center. And then I'll change the alignment here to the middle. Let's change the bowl. Right, so of course, if you want to squeeze this, uh, let's click wrap text. And I'll be able to squeeze this. Right, now let's start. So we'll do one round of simulation from the age of 70 up to the age of 80 years old. And then based on that number, we'll then run a simulation. Now at the beginning of year one, the client will have $2 million, let's be two. And then 40% of this will be invested in equities. So let's link that to cell B8 multiplied by the beginning wealth. So that's 800,000. And then the remaining amount will be invested in government bonds. So that's the 60%. And then we'll generate random numbers to compute the return on equities for every year. So in this case, I'm going to assume that the equity return follows a normal distribution. Now, of course, there are other distributions that can be used here. But uh, for simplification, then I'll just use... Uh, next, we are going to generate the... Next, we're going to generate the random numbers to compute the equity returns. So in this case, I'm going to assume that the equity return follows a normal distribution. Now, of course, there are other distributions that you can use besides the normal distribution. So to do that, I'll use the function norm.s.inv to return the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution. Now, then we have to specify a probability 
and this probability we will generate this using the random function which will return a number between 0 to 1 so each time of course the numbers will be different so don't expect to get the same result now to generate the return on equity so we'll take 1 okay which is the principal amount of the equity the or the initial value of the equity plus the return so the return on the equity will be the mean return so that would be a b6 okay so let's lock that in and then plus uh, the standard deviation of the, re the returns lock it in multiply by the random number so that gives us one plus the return on equities now i purposely put one plus here so that i can multiply it directly to the equity value which is in c13 if you do not want to do that then you can leave the plus one out but anyway you will have to um, include that in later right so of course uh, here i'm using the discrete return uh, if for some cases some may want to use continuously compounded returns you can do so as well for the wealth at the end of the year we will take the equity value at the start of the year then we'll multiply by one plus the return on equities in f13 and then for the government bonds that's 1.2 million in d13 and then we'll multiply by bracket one plus the return the risk free return which is uh, in b4 let's lock it in and then close the bracket so this is the client's uh, expected wealth at the end of the year. So of course, each time uh, each time uh, we enter a formula, this number will recompute on its own. And even when I press F9, okay, it will keep recalculating. So the numbers will keep changing. And then the drawdown at the end of the year is 200,000. That's in B9. Let's lock that in. So we're done for the first year. And then for the second year, we will take the wealth at the end of the year one, and then we'll minus the drawdown. So that will start us off with about 2.17 here for now. Then we'll, re we'll repeat the same steps for equity. That will be 40%. So let's copy the formula down. Just make sure that it's 40% okay, of the beginning wealth. And then government bonds will be the remaining amount. So here I'm assuming that when they when the client draws down this 200,000, the wealth manager will liquidate the 200,000 according to this percentage. So which means that 40% of these 200,000 will come from liquidating equities and then 60% will come from liquidating the government bonds. But if some certain assets are illiquid, then of course uh, the proportion could be different. Okay, so you can make your own adjustments. Now let's continue. So we'll then generate the random numbers and then we'll generate the equity return. And then uh, we'll recompute the wealth at the end of the year. And then we will again specify the drawdown amount. So we'll repeat this process up to the end of the 10th year. And then we'll see that at the end of the 10th year, we'll have a ending value. And then we'll need to compute the final value, okay, the wealth at the end of the 10th year. So to get that final amount, I'll just take the wealth at the end of year 10 minus the drawdown amount. So that gives us the final value. So when we do our simulation later on, I'm going to base it on this value to simulate. 